In this demonstration, we're going to take down SQL Server and we're going to do a complete restore of the database. You might have a catastrophic failure in the database tier and that's the most dangerous or most disturbing place to have a crash that you have to recover from in TFS. So I'm going to go into a brand new server that this that I've installed SQL Server on. I've installed, you'll see there's the report server databases here because I, I did install um, SQL Server reporting services. But if I look down here, there, there, well, there was no other databases. If I look down here, I see all of these databases, things like the TFS warehouse config, other org, offsite, all of these things that we have had and that we're using as part of our TFS installation. I'm going to take this server, right click it, and stop that server. That's going to stop the service itself. That is basically taking that box and killing it. All right, we see that that is now stopped. If we were here, we can also open up the Team Foundation Server Administration Console. And as you can see, it's having a little bit of trouble loading. If we go up and take a look at the application tier, it'll tell us that it could not connect to the database. The database is not operational. Everything's failing. We can't get to it. Can't load things like any of the configuration. We're basically dead in the water at this point. And if we tried to browse out and actually use this, we'd be in, we'd be in big trouble. Notice I can't connect to the database here. It can't grab the version. Can't figure out what application tiers exist. We're in big trouble in this case. So to resolve this, we're going to need to go out and actually grab our application tier where we did the backups and restores from. And we're going to go there and we're going to do a restore. Actually, it might be an even better demonstration if we do it from this application tier where we didn't create the backups, but we can restore from here as well. Let's go into our scheduled backups folder, and we're going to restore databases that were previously created by our scheduled backups. Once it opens, we enter the network backup path, and we happen to be locating everything at SRV19428 backslash TFS backups and we can then list those backups. We can see we've got several different backups, including the one that we have taken just recently, the one we took this morning. Let's grab that one, click Next. This lists all of the databases. Now, unfortunately, it's wanting to restore right back to our same instance, but we know that that instance is down. It's no longer going to work, so we need to specify the SQL Server instance that this is going to be targeted to. In our case, that's 19.432, we'll use 432, and we're going to restore all of these databases to it. Let's click Next, put in the encryption key password, Next, Next. It runs the readiness checks to make sure everything's ready to configure, and we click Restore. All right, it completed with issues. Let's click Next. And we failed to rep restore the reporting services encryption key. I'm going to have to do that manually after the fact. Luckily, the encryption key doesn't impact our TFS services at all, except for a couple instances where people won't be able to see some of the reports because we need to just go in and update the connection strings, just revalidate the permissions against the connection strings rather, and some subscriptions might now no longer be working if people have subscribed to those reports. But we can go in and restore that encryption key through the reporting services piece. In your case, don't mistype that encryption key and you'll be good. Let's close this and we have completed it. Notice you may need to purge the version control cache and some of the other things. We're going to be good. We've got it refreshed. Let's go back to our application tier. Okay, up at the application tier, we can now start to see things updating. All right, at the point of refresh, we find that the SQL server is not available. 
Unsurprising, let's scroll back down and take a look at the data tier. Data tier summary is still pointing to 19430, which is no longer an active SQL server. So now we need to move it and point it to the new database server. So first, before we do that, let's take a very quick look. Here's our old server and it's down. Here's our new server, the 1432. And let's refresh the databases on that server and notice that now we have a lot of databases. It's moved over and restored all of our things. So now we need to point the configuration database to this. And that's going to require a command line. So let's go to the command line. This is the part we're going to fire up the command prompt for. Blow it up a little bit to make it easier to read. And we're going to use the TFS config command line tool. And there's one here called register DB and that changes the configuration database. And basically the configuration database is what's pointing to everything else. We need to point that to a different one. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Register DB, pass in the slash question mark to get all the information. And here are the things that we need to pass in. We need to pass in the SQL instance and that's going to be our SRV 19432 and we're going to pass in our database name and that's going to be the name of the configuration database. Now the default is TFS underscore configuration and that's the name of the one that we've kept it to. So now we're going to remap and point to that database for our configuration. I've got a, a problem here. I've got the administration console open. Let's go ahead and close that administration console so that we can rerun this command line. Done. We still need to wait a little while. And now we're back in. Now let's fire the TFS administration console open again. All right, once it finishes loading up, you'll see that the notification URL is here, server URL, etc. Let's scroll down. We see the console users, email alert settings, and the data tier summary. Now notice the data tier is off to another location. Here's the data source, etc. We have our application tiers. Both those application tiers exist and our reporting services summaries. We do need to make sure that we update the reporting services encryption key. I'll go ahead and leave that as an exercise for you. We now are back in and TFS is back up and running and we can see that in our application tier.